our senior design project where we made hop extracts. I'm Scott Vanderbosch. Uh, my name is Santin Chen. I'm Eamon. So the idea with our project was that currently when beer is being made, they use uh, a wart where they boil the hops along with barley and other things. And after they boil them off for flavor, they take those hops and they send them off to animal feed. So we were hoping that we could pull out some useful ingredients out of those quote unquote spit hops so that we could make a profit and come up with a new product. Um, so as I said, we're using spent hops that have already been boiled, and we also had several other critical variables such as if they're pulverized, which solvent we use, uh, the number of leaching cycles, as well as the moisture content. So the idea is that when it gets boiled, all the um, polar compounds are pulled out and they're very flavorful and often bitter, but using a polar solvent such as ethanol or petroleum ether, we were able to get the uh, non-polar compounds out of the hops, which are the essential oils and the aromatic compounds, and, and it's very flavorful. Uh, here's an example of what the extract would look like. Uh, if you took a smell of this, it's, it's extremely strong and very concentrated. So, we use this oxalate extractor as our experimental scale, uh, which is often used for soybeans in their oil composition analysis. And using our found data with this scale, we optimize and design a full-scale process as an auxiliary line for a company like Sam Adams to take their spin hops from the warp and put it onto this auxiliary line and come out with an, a product like this, which could have a lot of uses, which we'll talk about later. Okay, so. What we would use for this is an extract. So um, we would use it in, this is a diagram of the beer making process. So you can add it at four different locations that we focused on. So these two locations would be replacing hops themselves in the brewing process. And these would be um, adding additional hop character to the beer itself. Uh, this would be pre-sale, and this is post-sale consumer level um, additive. Uh, this is a process overview that Nick talked about to size everything to be optimized to reduce cost, reduce cost and reduce waste. Uh, we found a yearly cost of that and our um, sales price is just a couple dollars below uh, retail per ounce. We would actually be selling our product uh, at the milliliter level to be an additive uh, either post-sale or yeah, post-sale or post-fermentation. As we said, we use ethanol as our solvent, so, but we still have other choices. For example, we can choose carbon dioxide and we also can use the petroleum ether. But like, there's a several, like, several factors that we consider that if we use petroleum ether, that our product might be poisoned, so we need to like do seri a series of distillation. But yeah, since we are using ethanol and it's not poison, and how about like carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is really like ideal because we can just release the pressure, and carbon dioxide is not poison, so it just go away. But uh, but if we use carbon dioxide, the, all the equipment that we are using is basically more expensive. We need to change almost everything. So consider all that, we decide to use like ethanol. And also based on our rate of return, we decide uh, we, we decide the extra time. The number of cycle is seven. So that means, but we can also like always adjust the, the number of cycle. And um, and also for some detail, like we can also change is like fluid as bed dryer for like multiple process instead of just one big. We can purchase several small ones. But since our entire like scale is not big, so for a small scale, like this is we decide that this is our best answer. This is our best answer. I'm going to talk about the global impacts and sustainability. So if, I, if you mentioned, if, I, if you remember earlier, Nick mentioned one of our biggest goals is to have zero waste after the hops have been spent. 
So one of the major major things that we want to do is we want to like expand the markets. For example, we want to like we, we can use the hops for like you know the meals, the little flavor enhancers. We can put that in the beers. As college students, you might have some like cheap beer. You're like, okay, I'm going here to enhance my beer a little bit. Um, it's also been known for uh, holistic healthcare and supplements. So um, hop extract could be in, put into the supplements and like to treat leg ulcers or like sleep apnea, that type of thing. So it's kind of expand our market more. And actually, uh, I, I heard the FDA is, uh, they're, they're making, they are in the process of approving uh, uh, like a process where they can, the, 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 usually the feed, the, the hops go straight to the feed to, to the animals and whatnot. So it's making it a longer process for them. So that's gonna up the cost. So it's gonna give us an opportunity to make a really a stamp. And instead of like throwing it into the, uh, to the dump or whatever, uh, that's like that's like undesirable. People are not going to want that. So we can use those hops and make open up a new venue of market to, to, to for some of the products I just mentioned. Can you tell us a little bit more about hops and why they're so important in the brewing process? Of course, hops are actually a flower that are used in the brewing process of beer. Uh, they contain many compounds that are very useful when used in the brewing process. So they contribute uh, alpha and beta acids, which, when heated, taste bitter in the human mouth. And they also contribute oils, which gives that hoppy aroma that you smell when you smell beer. Uh, they also contribute a small amount of antimicrobial compounds, which allows the wort to be cooled for fermentation and stops any microbes from growing before the yeast are added.